So, uh, next item on the agenda is the topic of the day is going to be the discussion about big decimal class. So we've seen a uh, system class such as string, which is extremely useful to store text information, uh, search for it, uh, you know, analyze individual characters, uh, concatenate strings, you name it. There's an uh, unlimited number of operations that you can do with text. But the, the next thing is to, to open a discussion about uh, floating point numbers. So I'm going to jump back to our home page and scroll down to this presentation uh, on the outline. So we just go officially to our outline. And uh, this particular topic is covered in uh, uh, week six which officially we have today. Uh, uh, and the handout is quite impressive. I'm going to open the presentation uh, version of it. Because I mentioned midterm, uh, we're going to go to, an ex to a certain extent through all these topics. But I decided to keep it the whole list of these slides in one handout, so you have one particular handout to focus on uh, things related to the midterm. Okay. So uh, we'll, be, we'll be jumping somewhat between those topics, but uh, since I said uh, it's very important to, uh, to, to cover the big decimal this week, uh, I'm going to jump to this part here, number 33, the big decimal class. Um, we talked about uh, 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 primitive data types in the programming language. Those included bytes, uh, characters, integers, long integers, uh, doubles. And then we said that when we talk about the string, suddenly it's somewhat a different uh, data type because it's an object. And so its storage type is, is different. And we have different style of access to that particular object in memory so that we use the reference to that object. So we say there are primitive data types and reference data types. OK. So we're kind of jumping back to the discussion about primitive data types. And there are two Java types, double and float, uh, respectively uh, eight bytes and four bytes sized structures in memory, which are capable of storing a floating point um, value, which means it has a decimal point. And it also can be a sign value, right? It could be uh, negative or positive, could be zero. But in general, it has in its structure, perhaps I can, again, demonstrate with, uh, uh, with a little drawing of it, is that um, in memory, what happens that you have those eight bytes of memory. But what, uh, for example, double does, the double uh, primitive data type does. It allocates one little bit for the sign. If it's zero, it's a positive or zero. If it's set to one, it becomes a negative number. Then it also subdivides this, the remaining part of this data structure in memory. It subdivides into a, uh, um, a mantissa or exponent part of the floating point number and the uh, logarithmic part of that number. So for example, if I store, uh, if I want to store a value such as 0 0.5 in here, what it's going to, to store is actually an integer number 5 in this section, and then it's going to store an exponent, or, or the power to which I need to rise this number to get to 0 0.5 type of fraction which is uh, going to be uh, what is going to be minus 1, right? So, uh, so then uh, 5 uh, times uh, 10 in, the, in, in minus 1 power uh, becomes uh, 5 uh, divided by 10, right? <laughs> and the result is uh, the fraction 0 0.5, right, as, as, we, use, uh, as we used to uh, use uh, as humans, right? If this was... 0 0.005, right, then this would, the uh, mantissa part of the storage will be minus 2. 
So today here, we're not going to analyze the details of the storage or, or uh, even talk about how many bytes are allocated by each portion of this number. I'm just going to tell you uh, here that in general, it's a data structure. And your CPU knows how to interpret this data structure. And your CPU coprocessor knows how to do math with it, multiply, divide, and, and do many different things. We're going to ex uh, explore today one particular aspect of a fractional number in our code. In particular, we're going to discuss issues related to rounding of these numbers. And to an extent, the issues with comparing these numbers. So uh, on this particular slide, uh, we can uh, say that if we have uh, a dollar amount, for example, and uh, uh, this uh, we expect to get to a value of five dollars and zero cents, but for some reason the the internally stored number was uh, a long fraction, and it got rounded using some rounding rules, which we start learning from middle school, you know, the result of rounding could be a slightly higher number, right? So it could be, well, sometimes it's acceptable, sometimes it's not acceptable. So business people will tell you whether what's acceptable and so forth. But uh, at our level, it would be interesting that if we try to compare 5 to 5.0, how do we know that we should accept it as the same value or two different values. So let me demonstrate. Uh, again, uh, we have uh, more of these examples on the next slide. Uh, but uh, right here, let's uh, take a look at the code. So if I, if I intentionally created uh, a rate and another rate uh, variable, rate 2, and I made it 0. Um, uh, 851, right? So another fractional number, but they're very close. Typically, to compare them, you uh, need to go, you need to accept uh, uh, essentially a, uh, uh, a, a level of accuracy. So to compare them, uh, typically a programmer would write code like this. If uh, you know, uh, uh, an immature program would, would try something like that, if rate equals rate 2. But, you know, when, when comparing fractional numbers, this typically is discouraged. Compare, a straightforward comparison like that is discouraged. Instead, you need to say, how about if I look at the difference and accept my difference as being, for example, if uh, that difference is less than, um, let's say, 0 0.01, a certain threshold of accuracy, you know, related to rounding, then I can accept this, right? Then I, ex I, then I can accept uh, the, the rate 1 and rate 2 to be the same, right? Exclamation point. Otherwise, right, they are different. Okay, so that makes sense, right? So I'm looking at the accuracy of the results of my computation if, if those took place and essentially looking at the difference between them. The problem with this is that rate can be higher or rate 2 can be higher or lower. So uh, once in a while, uh, this will be a negative number and once in a while, this will be a positive number. So it's advisable that what I uh, do is that I use a uh, Java API call, which converts the result to an absolute uh, number, which means just the magnitude of that value, right? So we could have negative fraction or positive fraction. What we actually want to take is the absolute value, which is the magnitude, just the positive version of that. So. Um, uh, let's see if I can uh, at least, uh, you know, try to compile this and, and say uh, um, system dot out uh, dot print uh, line and say uh, the same, right, or 
otherwise just say different. Right? So in our case, the difference should be less than this number because the difference is of uh, you know 1,000, uh, whereas this is 100. So that should uh, I'm expecting that it's going to print the same. So if I try to run this, it says the same. All right. So you get the flavor of it somewhat. The, 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 the fractional numbers come with a certain territory, and you have to be able to accept um, values and results of calculations with, some, uh, with a grain of salt. Basically, be critical about the results and making the right decision how to process these numbers. Now, things become somewhat more complicated when you, do, when you begin to considering how, um, how about if we discuss the precision at which these numbers are stored internally. How the idea that the computer is storing those numbers with a certain level of precision internally, and that's sort of like a consistent um, idea, right? It's not going to store one number with one precision and another number with, with a different precision. And yet rounding and other considerations relying very heavily on the level of precision that we need at the, you know, at each particular, uh, in each particular case. So there's this, this level of control that programmer needs to control the precision. So this is going to be our uh, next, uh, uh, next portion of our discussion. Let's save this.